Hello everyone, I'm the Sassy Gamer, and today we're here for yet another episode of Civilization VI Tips, where today we're going to be continuing our series on each of the unique districts and talking about the, in uh, the encampment, the military district in Civilization VI. So to unlock the encampment and to be able to build it, all you have to do is research bronze working, which uh, is uh, a pretty simple tech to get. All you have to do is go through mining, and then bronze working will become available. It is very easy to boost bronze working as well. All you have to do is kill three barbarians, which a lot of the times can just naturally happen, especially if a barbarian camp uh, gets, gets awakened upon your city. The barbs will normally just come and suicide off your capital, which then can boost bronze working. You could go out and hunt barb scouts or hunt for encampments, but I think that's a little bit, uh, it's, that's a quite more effort uh, required to do that as opposed to just letting a camp wake up and attack your city and suicide on it, since barbs can in fact not take your capital. Uh, but nonetheless, once you uh, research bronze working, you will be able to construct the encampment district, and the encampment district has quite a few unique things about it. So for one, the encampment district has absolutely no sort of adjacency bonuses. Unlike, I think, pretty much every other district in the game, there is nothing really to consider when placing the encampment other than just its strategic position. There's no yields to be gained or anything like that. As far as placement goes, it is still fa fairly similar uh, to the other districts, but it does have a unique caveat as well. So with the encampment, you can put it on any land tile that is not a luxury or a mountain, um, as long as you have the tech to clear what's on the tile. But with the encampment, it also does have to be at least two tiles away from the city. So as you can see, I can't put the encampment any of these tiles because it is only one tile away from my city. It has to be at least two tiles away in order for me to place it down. And when it comes to placing the encampment district, what I like to consider, uh, since there is no sort of adjacency bonus, is just kind of kind of how strategically the encampment could help me. So if I put it over here, you can see Germany is over here, so this would be a fairly decent spot for my encampment, just because it would allow me to better defend myself against Germany in the event that they attacked. So really, I just aim for um, for putting the encampment towards a border that uh, that, that is bordering another civilization as a sort of defensive measure. Um, whenever you first just place down the encampment, it will have a base cost of 54 production, which will then scale based on how many districts you have, or how many other encampments you have, how many cities you have. Actually, I don't believe it's related to that. I'm not 100% sure, so I'm not gonna not gonna go ahead and uh, talk about that too much because I still need to figure out how that works exactly. But the the production cost will scale, and you can see what the actual production cost is at the bottom there. Um, so just placing down the encampment does a few things, and it actually doesn't list all of them here, it's just in the little uh, box that appears. So for one, you do get plus one great general point per turn, which is very nice because that allows you to get a fairly early great general, which can help boost up some of your horsemen or your swordsmen to go attack someone else. Um, one of the other things the encampment does just by having the district itself down with no buildings is it allows you to build units with only one copy of a strategic resource. So normally you would need, say, two iron to be able to build swordsmen, but if you have a uh, an encampment down in a city, then you'll only need one source of iron to be able to build swordsmen. And same goes with all of the other uh, lo uh, strategic resources in the game. So it just kind of makes it so uh, it makes it a little bit easier to be able to build some of those units that do require strategic resources. So I've just gone and placed the encampment district to show you one of the other things that having one down by itself does, and that is provides a bit of defense strength. So if I'm able to put units in the in the city, then the units will gain a little bit of defensive strength just from being in the encampment district. So that is another thing that's nice. Uh, if you have walls in the city as well, then you will get another copy of walls effectively on the encampment district, which does give you another ranged attack and makes it very easy for defense. Also, if you have a unit in there whenever the, the encampment has walls as well, then that unit it cannot be attacked. The uh, the enemy units do have to attack the the encampment district itself first. Um, the one other thing to talk about with just the encampment district is its citizen yields. So just putting one down by itself won't give you any citizen slots, but if you uh, if you get some of the buildings and uh, thus are able to put citizen slots down, also if you don't know what a citizen slot is, I'll show a little graphic here in a bit, but uh, once you are able to put a citizen in the, the encampment district, all citizens that are placed there will provide plus one culture and plus one production. Now let's go ahead and talk about the various buildings for the encampment district. The first of the buildings for the encampment district is the barracks, which is unlocked right with uh, bronze working along with the encampment district itself. And the barracks, when uh, constructed, will provide plus 20% or 25% combat experience for all melee and ranged land units trained in this city. 
Um, do note that melee doesn't include such things as horsemen uh, or war or uh, war chariots or war carts, whatever they're called in this game, just because those are technically cavalry units, and even though they have a melee attack, they're not melee class units. So this would be things such as your warriors, your swordsmen, um, and then ranged ones would be like your slingers and your archers. So those units will get 25% extra XP. Uh, the barracks itself also will provide plus one addition, uh, additional production, plus one housing, plus one citizen slot to assign your citizens, and an additional great general point per turn. Um, it also does have one maintenance cost and 90 production cost, so not too bad. It's it's not going to be too impactful, but in the early game, whenever you're only making five gold per turn, then one uh, gold per turn can actually be a little bit impactful, but later on in the game, this doesn't really matter. So I think barracks are actually one of the weaker uh, tier 1 buildings in the game. They don't really provide that great of yields. They can be nice for getting that extra great general point per turn um, to get you to a general a little bit faster. Maybe right whenever you get swordsman, you want to get a great general as well. So that would be one use for them. The, the, the additional XP can be nice, but I don't think it's all that necessary. And 25% isn't, it, it sounds good, but it actually doesn't tend to speed things up all too much. Um, and additionally, the citizen slot can be nice to get you a little bit of extra culture or production, but once again, I think it would be more worthwhile to just work like a hill tile with a mine or a farm or something rather than just getting one extra culture and production. So overall, I would, if you're going for early domination, I would definitely get a barracks. Like, for instance, if you're playing someone like Monty or Gilgamesh who can make use of uh, or, uh, of that extra little production and Monty with his eagle warriors to get them a little bit more uh, XP, then I think a barracks could be nice. But if you're not going strictly for early aggression, I think you can actually kind of hold off on the barracks until later whenever you have uh, just kind of some spare resources to spend on it. The other tier 1 building for the encampment district is the stable and it is unlocked with horseback riding and it should be noted that the stable and the barracks are uh, exclusive with one or with, with one another so I'm not sure if that's the right word to use but uh, if you have a barracks you can't build a stable and if you have a stable you can't build a barracks. So what the stable does is it provides 25% combat experience for all cavalry class units uh, that are trained in the city so that would be like your horsemen or your, uh, your, your chariots or maybe your knights later on so um, those would be the units that are affected by that. Um, it will provide plus one production, plus one housing, one citizen slot, and one great general point per turn, all the same as the barracks, so there's nothing different there. It really just matters as to which one or which type of unit class you would like to get the XP for. So as I mentioned, if you're playing Monty, you should probably go for a barracks. If you're playing Genghis Khan or Scythia, then you should probably get the stable instead. Um, the stable as well does have a base cost of, uh, or a maintenance cost of one gold per turn, and it does have a little bit of a higher production cost at 120. So just kind of as I mentioned, same story goes for the stable really as with the barracks. It's a decent thing, it's not particularly great. If you're playing someone like Scythia or Genghis Khan that really likes early cavalry, then I would definitely recommend getting a stable. But if you're not planning on going for any, like, early cavalry aggression, then I would kind of just avoid the stable. And also, if you're not planning on building too much cavalry in general, or if you don't have a good source of uh, horses, then I would uh, go for the barracks instead. As for the Tier 2 building for the encampment district, we have the Armory, which is unlocked with military engineering. And what the Armory does is it provides plus 25% combat experience for all land units trained in the city. So do note that this is all of your land units. Um, do also note that this is not air units or naval units, for instance. Um, but all land units will receive 25% extra combat experience. The armory also does provide plus two production, one citizen slot, and one great general point per turn. Once again, uh, these are pretty underwhelming yields. I guess two production is kind of decent, but still, two production is very, uh, it's, it's, it's very weak um, for whenever you get the armory, so I wouldn't rely on that two production all too much, but it can maybe shave one one turn off of a unit or something like that. Um, so I wouldn't, I don't think that these yields are particularly good. The great general point is nice. Um, and once again, the citizen slot, I just don't think that the citizen yields are very worth it. Uh, the armory has a base cost of two gold per turn. I, I keep saying base cost, a maintenance cost of two gold per turn and a production cost of 195. So as for my thoughts on the armory, I think that the armory is fairly decent. If you're going for a domination game, I would definitely recommend getting the armory. Um, so... If you're not going for domination, though, then I don't think that the armory is particularly necessary. You can maybe get one in, in, in your empire just to use that as your city to train your defensive units if you're not planning on going for an aggressive game. 
um, because that extra uh, unit XP can be nice, especially if you're defending, because once you get your unit promotions, then your units will be able to heal up as well, so that can just kind of help keep you alive, but if you're going for domination, I would definitely recommend getting a lot of armories, because they are quite good, and that extra, uh, uh, that extra XP can definitely be impactful towards your victory. And the Tier 3 building for the Encampment District is the Military Academy, which is unlocked with Military Science. And the Military Academy provides plus 25% combat experience for all land units trained in the city. Um, it also allows you to train corps and armies outright. And, and, and uh, additionally, corps and armies, uh, their, their training cost is reduced by 25%. As far as yields for the Military Academy go, we have plus 3 production, plus 1 housing, plus 1 citizen slot, and plus 1 great general point per turn. Uh, once again, these yields are not all really, <laughs> they're really not that great. I guess plus 3 production is kind of okay. Once again, that might shave one turn off of your units, but still, by the time you get the Military Academy, plus 3 production is like pretty much equivalent to one mine, or maybe even a little bit less than that, depending on what techs you have so far. Uh, the plus one housing actually can be nice because it does allow you to grow just a little bit taller by having one more housing. Um, so that actually is a, a quite a good benefit to the Military Academy. Uh, the Military Academy has a maintenance cost of two gold per turn, which should be noted is actually the same as the Armory. So it's actually not as expensive as some of the other Tier 3 buildings in the game, I believe. Uh, it also does have a base, pr a base production cost of 390 production. So the Military Academy, I think, is probably the best of the buildings that are in the Encampment District, just because it allows you to train corps and armies outright. Uh, I think that corps and armies are quite strong, but normally I hate to go and, you know, build, say, three horsemen and then combine them, or I guess horsemen would be a little bit early, but say three knights and then combine them, because I feel as though that's a little bit inefficient and a little bit of a waste. But with the Military Academy, uh, you can just train them outright, and they have a reduced production cost on, on the training of uh, outright corps and armies. So I think that if you're going domination, I would get a lot of mil Military Academies and use that to just spam out corps and armies. Uh, if you're not going for Domination Victory, I would still recommend getting at least one Military Academy, because being able to train armies of, say, machine guns, um, and then plopping those in your cities can be very helpful, and it can make it very easy to defend yourself. So, I think that you should definitely get at least one Military Academy in every single game you play. If you're going for Domination, I would go for more than that, but uh, if not, you should you should still get at least one. And just the last thing I would like to mention is the project, or the, 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 the district project for the encampment district, which is known as encampment training. And what encampment training does is it provides uh, a little bit of gold per turn, and it also provides great general points once it is finished. Uh, I did find out that the, the amount of great general points that you get is equal to 15% of the production that you put into it. Um, and this, this uh, uh, much like with the actual district cost, scales as well, so you can see it has a base cost of 25, but then it scales up to 32. Um, so encampment training I don't think is very good. You can maybe use it early on if you really, really, really want to get to like an early great general, but normally the like you don't have to rush for a great general because if you put down an encampment and you put down a barracks, you'll probably just naturally get a great general on your own, so I don't think encampment training is very necessary. The little bit of extra gold per turn can be helpful if you are uh, if you have a lot of military units and you don't have the, the economy to support it early on, but aside from that, I wouldn't really recommend encampment training. So thank you everyone for watching, I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, if not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for more Civilization VI content, feel free to subscribe. Uh, this was the encampment, uh, hopefully I didn't miss anything. If I did, feel free to tell me in the comment section below. But anyways, thank you for watching, and goodbye.